Hey YouTubers, Rob here with, with uh, another look at another Commodore 64 game. This time we're taking a look at Snare, a rather cool action puzzler released by Thalamus in 89, uh, developed by one Rob Stevens, um, some great music uh, by Martin Walker. Um, I sort of had seen ads for this game, actually on Thalamus' Hits 2 compilation um, back in the day, and actually just got a hold of that compilation, was actually able to find it a uh, sealed copy. So this is Ring going through this, playing it, really kind of got, got hooked on it. Um, so I thought it'd be, be cool to do a little video of it and, and talk about it. So the basic plot is, um, it's 2049, um, uh, one of the richest men in the world, Andre Thelman, passed away. Um, and in his, uh, in his estate, in his grounds, he had built a maze called The Snare, hence the title. Um, it was in the 20... 20 individual levels um, that were all linked up, uh, guarded by robots, and various effect environmental setups in there. Um, just before he died, it's rumored that he went in with some with his most prized possession. And ever, ever since he died, every other people have been trying to get in there, trying to go through the snare but not coming out. So it's become a popular sort of contest. There've been cameras set up, and you're going in to try and run the snare. Uh, one of the things I've liked, like out of the box, is this the track mode just showing like information over the over the ship, over the craft you fly into the snare with. I also love the loading sequence. I decided to cut it, but when the game loads, um, you actually get a breakdown of like your your HUD UI, how it all works, and you also get like information of all the tiles that the the grids are made up. I think that was actually rather cool tip twist to keep you interested. You know, mostly loading your game. Even if it's fairly quick, there are some games that do load very fast. Um, just, you know, flashing colors and stuff. Here it's like, it's actually got useful information to read and revise in case you haven't played the game. So we'll dive in. There's not, not much in terms of options. So we come to the first stage, and you get a sort of brief on how the environmental setup is. So in this case, you can see, because of the air resistance, there is, there is a reduced speed for your craft. But this first stage is just a tutorial, so it's pretty easy. So the idea is, you navigate these maze. It's actually got a, you know, I guess you'd say an early version of the, the Mode 7 effect. Uh, your basic joystick controls, um, up accelerates, down brakes, left and right to turn. Now that flashy tile I just ran over was specifically for uh, an energy bonus. So you hear those going off, and the idea is you run to them, you can Collect dice for extra points when you leave the stage. Now I'm just circling a teleporter. It's a local local teleporter here. Oh, I missed the, the pickup. Alright. So the idea is you go through these stages. Those arrows force you to the error. And we can see that's the final exit in front of us. Um the first thing to note is the the way he's done the, the way the presentation is being done is you think a game like this would normally use, you know, the craft would actually move in the appropriate direction. Instead, it's actually rotating, you know, I guess a simpler version of, you know, what you'd see on the, the Super NES with Mode 7. Um, it's that kind of rotating playful. And that was actually, when playing the game for the first time, that really did confuse me. Just because the orientation it flips over very fast, instantaneous orientation, and also the fact that your craft there isn't any sort of dragging or sliding as it turns, it turns like, as the saying goes, on a dime. But once you get used to that, you get used to the controls, you get used to, you get over the orientation, <clears throat> you find it actually pretty easy to navigate the maze. So that first one was pretty easy to walk through. Area 2 is a little trickier. Um, so... And again, the basic idea, of course, is that we just have to get to the edge of the stage. There's no time limits, which I like. Um, yeah, a lot of these sort of puzzler-type games would try to make it that you'd have to... would have to make it so that you needed to get through the stage within a time limit. Here, you're not actively doing that. Oh, that was close. Um, I flip the tile that tells me to turn. Um, here, the fact that you don't have that time limit gives you room to sort of 
be a little cautious and explore comfortably without to minimize your mistakes. And there's actually something I really love with the, the way the Lotus system is put. Oh, I turned badly there. Um, what I think I like with the way the, the game's loader is implemented is, um, you know, if you got game over, you ran out of lives, you can see those in the bottom right. I've got three left now. Um, you'd expect you'd have to reload level one and start again, but they've made it so that, yeah, not far enough. All right. But if you, if you, if you happen to die, completing a level, um, you don't get sent back to level one. Instead, you go to the start of the block. So there are 20 levels in the snare. And they're divided into five groups of four. So after every fourth stage, it will load a new level in, a um, new set of levels in. So you just go to the start of that block, which I think makes the game a little more playable. And that's why the robot guardians, um, those of course, patrol the maze. They also flick switches. Um, the next stage we come to actually has the switches. So that's stage two done. This third one. So one gets a little. This third one actually gets. Oh, I missed the energy pickup. And the other thing I like with the detail is watch the players craft as I turn. Actually, see like they've they've actually used a different sprite to sort of simulate the light shade, the light source. I think it's a nice little tip. I mean, because there's a lot of enemies as well, they're using the um, multicolor main sprite with an overlay to give it a little more detail, which I like as well from an art style. I quite like the art to this game. Um, you know, it's simple and functional, but, you know, it uses the multicolor aspect of the hardware. But, uh, yeah, there's one thing this game really makes me want a very precise joystick. Because otherwise you could end it very, very easily like that. Alright, that's the last life. So, with this level, the first trick is you need to activate the switch. And you have to be careful because those switches, I've turned it on, but for instance, if I actually went over it, I could turn it off. But also the guardians can turn it off. So you've got this sort of... Ooh, you have to get the right speed over that jump. That's game over. Um... I think we'll go have another go. As I said, I've really been enjoying this just for this sort of action puzzle style aspect. I probably shouldn't have used Rob there. <laughs> Seeing there was the, the original top score by the by the coder. But we'll dive in. Dive in for another play. But yeah, all in all, I mean I'm really impressed with this. I really like, you know, there's some fast move graphics, some great music. I wish that you know, and it's sort of that <coughs> action challenge that doesn't feel I guess you say it doesn't feel like pressure, you know, you could sort of move slowly through this through these mazes. And I and it makes the game a little, lot more enjoyable, you know. I've played other puzzle games that feel, you know, you've got this you've got this clock that you have to fight in order to complete the game. But here it's No, you you run on your own pace and I think it really adds to the game. I love the little detail that in that in that initial tunnel, um it actually said welcome as you're approaching the first teleport. And just these little details are what I like with this game. Um, and it's one of those things where the, you know, the presentation comes together very nicely. Um, some nice graphics, audio, really complement the package. Um, as I said, I hadn't, I hadn't played this, I hadn't played this during the, you know, during the 80s and 90s. And having a chance to play it now, it's like, I wish I'd know. I wish I'd actually been able to play it back then. I would really have enjoyed it. I mean, it's what I've been enjoying now, and I actually like put the put the best part of an afternoon on um, a few days ago, and it sort of put 
sort of pushed up importance in my list. It's like, yeah, this would be good to do for the to do a playoff. And it's actually like it was the sort of team that we didn't really see a lot of. I mean, we had this sort of act. We sort of had you know most puzzles were sort of conventional puzzles, puzzle puzzling games, but they weren't in this sort of style with this like this action element to it. So. I really have to, really am impressed by this. Um, do, uh, even though I'm playing utterly rubbish at it, I'm really impressed with it. It's one I do really want to go. I definitely am planning to sit down and put some more time into. Um, the next time I'm actually on the C64. Um, I mean, I got up to stage four and I haven't been able to get back there. I keep, keep messing up that jump, which is where, where I died last time on stage three. And even now, even though I played this stage, oh! <laughs> even though I played this, played, played stage two and played stage three a fair bit, I can't quite get back there. But anyway, that's snare. Um, one I've, as I said, I'm really impressed with this. I really have been digging it, and I do have to recommend checking it out. Um, been put together really well. It's a nice set of polish, nice, nice challenge. Um, as one I really want to get to, and I wish, I wish I'd been able to get further in, in uh, recording this video. As usual, I hope you enjoyed the video, I look forward to bringing you um, another one soon. And as usual, like, subscribe, share, all of that stuff if you keep, if you enjoy what I'm doing with these videos and these games. Uh, have a good one.